Welcome. Welcome to our celebration in Miami County for National Philanthropy Day. We're um, thrilled to have such a great crowd today, and thank you to Hartzell Propeller for hosting us today. Um, I'm going to first hand the microphone to Pastor Clemis, um, and he is going to say a prayer and, and a blessing. How's everybody doing okay? Good. You're awfully friendly, so that's, uh, that's always awesome. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Matt. I'm with CLC. I drive that obnoxious orange painted car. Uh, we threw the block party. We're across from Paul Sherry, and so thank you all uh, for your support. But uh, as we're here today, I'm reminded of a passage, a very familiar passage you could probably uh, quote in John 3.16, where it says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever might believe upon him would not die, but have everlasting life. And the word, real quick, I want to share with you is, is the word begotten. The word begotten means one and only, or one of a kind. See, a heavenly Father gave a one and only Son. It costed him so much so that he even looked away. And a lot of you have a one and only a one and only for you is a one and only uh, lunch break or a one and only day off or a one and only savings fund or a one and only you fill in the blank. And you gave it in service for another. And here's the deal. When that father gave his one and only son, there was life was attached to that sacrifice. And the life is attached to your sacrifice. Life through organizations and life through, through uh, thoughts and life in others. And others can have life because of you laying down your lives for another. Your one and only break that you give up. Your one and only that you give. And so here's the deal. I want to pray for us. Uh, pray for just a special blessing on all those who have given your one and only time to be here. A uh, lunch break, etc. To do things for this city because we believe in this city. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for each and every person here that has given some of their one and only uh, times, their, their lunch breaks, their days off, their savings funds, their time away from their family, that it all costed them. Thank you, God, that you've stirred it in their hearts to do this, uh, whether... Um, uh, they in order or not, I just pray, God, that you would bless all their sacrifice so that others might know that life has come from a sacrifice. Thank you for all the life in this city, the life in this room, life to organizations, and life to all the people that have been blessed by their sacrifice. It's, it's in the name of the one who gave it all and made such a sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people say amen. Thanks. God bless you guys. Thank you, Pastor. Well, as a nonprofit geek, um, I've been in the, the field of the nonprofits for about, well, it'll be 20 years in, in, uh, in March. And this is one of the days that I think is very important to celebrate because it not only celebrates the nonprofit or organizations that are going out into our communities and providing the services that they do, but they are also um, celebrating those folks who um, were just mentioned in that prayer who give their time their talents um, to make our communities what they are. So um, hats off to all of you for making this an important part of your day today. I'm going to start out um, the day by reading a proclamation it's from Senator Beagle. The General Assembly of the State of Ohio, honoring the Chambers of Commerce of Miami County for exemplary attainment. On behalf of the members of the Senate of the 131st General Assembly of Ohio, we are pleased to commend the chambers on, on their celebration of National Philanthropy Day, which is actually takes place November 15th of 2015. Conceived by Douglas Freeman in the 1980s, National Philanthropy Day was officially declared as each November 15th by President Ronald Reagan in 1986 to recognize the generosity of Americans to reflect on the meaning of giving, and to encourage all citizens to demonstrate kindness and generosity every day. This special observance provides a fitting time to pay tribute to the Chambers of Commerce for it, for it they have achieved a remarkable record of service by developing entrepreneurial interest, promoting cooperation between local businesses and residents, and for their accomplishments um, that are justifiable a source of pride and outstanding reflection, not only on the organizations themselves, but also on, on the members of the community. 
Since their inceptions, the Chambers of Commerce have enhanced the quality of life in our communities and, our tremendous, and, and, and its tremendous contributions have gained the gratitude and esteem of the entire community. We are certain that as this noteworthy association maintains its unfaltering commitment to service, it will continue in the tradition of excellence that has become its hallmark. Thus, it is with genuine satisfaction that we applaud the Chambers during the 2015 National Philanthropy Day and expend, extend best wishes for ongoing success. Senator Bill Beagle, 5th Senatorial District. We very much appreciate um, him taking the time to have that for us today. Um, some of the things that we like to highlight during this, this celebration each year are the phenomenal statistics that represent not only the country in their philanthropy, but also in the state of Ohio. Um, there are some copies up here. The colored one is, is Ohio Giving, and uh, the other one is the National Giving Statistics. I'm not going to bore you with a whole lot of numbers, but some of the things that I've highlighted today I think you'll find amazing. Total contributions in 2014 in the country totaled $358.4 billion. It was up 7.1% over 2013. Individual giving increased by 5.7%. Foundation giving increased by 8.2%. And giving through bequests, so all of you nonprofit organizations out there that aren't um, out talking to your donors about leaving something behind after they're gone, that percentage has increased since 2013 by 15.5%. And corporate giving, which to me is, is a wonderful um, example of how corporations are, are again becoming um, embedded in their communities, rose 13.7%. The big picture for Ohio, $7.8 billion of total charitable giving occurred in 2014. Individual giving, $6.1 billion, which was 78%. Foundation giving, 16% at $1.26 billion. And United Ways, $181 million at 2% of that overall giving. And other funders, $270 million. The interesting fact that I find is that uh, all income levels in the state of Ohio are participating in philanthropy. With 22% of the overall 500, or of the overall 1.26 million dollars um, given, I'm sorry, 1.26 billion dollars. Um, 22 percent from came from households that had income under 50 thousand dollars a year. 68 percent came from households with 50 to 200 thousand dollars a year, and 10 percent came for those with incomes over 200 thousand. That totaled. Um, uh, nearly $5 billion. I'm sorry, my first number was, was incorrect. Over the last five years, Ohio's, Ohioans have contributed $25.9 billion to favorite, their favorite charitable causes. Top areas of support um, that, that individuals have supported are probably the norm, religion, education, human services, and other category, which a lot of different things fall into, and health. And 19% of overall giving was given to public affairs, arts and culture, international affairs, and in the environment. Um, in Ohio, there's 4,005 grant makers. 92% of those are private. 3% are corporate foundations, 3% operating foundations, and 2% community foundations. There was a $1.26 billion awarded in grants last year. 60% by the private community foundations, 27% by community foundations, 12% by corporate. Overall, those grant makers hold $20.1 billion in the state of Ohio. It's a lot of, a lot of wealth that we hold here in, the, in Ohio. Um, and to highlight also another major grant maker would be Ohio's United Ways. 5% uh, of United Ways in Ohio gave more than $10 million uh, for an overall 123 million given. 21% gave between one and $10 million, which for an overall of $40 million. And 74% gave less than a million dollars, totaling $17 million across the state of Ohio. So I think you can see by those numbers that Ohio has a lot of really good things going on. And I think you will 
also really um, agree that our, our county here has been blessed by not only those who, who give of their, of their money, but also of their talents. Um, so I thank you again for, for being here today. Please enjoy the rest of the comments. And again, if you'd like statistics after the, the presentation, feel free, free to take them. Now I'm going to introduce Cheryl Stiffel Francis from the Miami County Foundation. Thanks, Melissa. I am so excited to have everybody here today because Hartzell Propeller is an amazing company with amazing employees. You know, we've been celebrating National Philanthropy Day in Miami County now for several years, but last year we decided why don't we recognize some businesses in our communities throughout Miami County that um, really have charity in the forefront of their minds and their employees. So this year we want to recognize and celebrate with Hartzell Propeller and they were nice enough to open their doors and invite us all in, and they're even providing the refreshments for us, so thank you so much. Let me give you a little bit of information about Hartzell Propeller. Do you know this company will soon be celebrating 100 years? And it's such a beautiful facility, so if you haven't been in here already, I'm sure that you were wowed as you walked through the building. Um, it was founded in 1970 by the late Robert Hartzell, who, by the way, was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame last month, and I'm thrilled about that. Um, as you can imagine, the company has an amazing history. Um, in 1987, not only have we been blessed in our Miami County with the Hartzell family, but we were blessed with the Brown family. In 1987, Jim Brown bought the company and the business has continued to grow. Jim Brown and his leadership team have formed a family here, a family committed to giving of their time, their talents, and their money. Millions, that's correct, millions of dollars have been donated by this company's owners and their employees. The number of organizations and people who have benefited from the family of Hartzell employees is enormous. In 2008, a beautiful statue was set in place in Hartzell Field at the Piqua Municipal Airport with an inscription that states, I get really choked up about this. It says, to Jim Brown, with love and gratitude from the children of the Hartzell Propeller family. If you know Jim Brown, you know how wonderful he is, and it truly is a family here. The company's website states, and I love this, simply put, we create the world's best propellers because we hire the world's best engineers, assemblers, and technicians, and they truly are the best people. Built on honor was a phrase adopted in the, 19, the early 1920s, and it is still on every Hartzell propeller today. I asked John Friggy, who is the executive vice president of Hartzell Propeller, to tell us about their philosophy on giving and just kind of provide some examples on their charitable work with their employees that are involved. Hartzell's is not one for... Um, plaques and, and uh, recognition. So I think we're all here just to kind of recognize our support for Hearts of Propeller. Please welcome JJ Friggy. Thank you, Cheryl. And thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we are really pleased to, to host this event and we're really pleased to uh, do our part to contribute to the community and the, and the good works going on. Um, Cheryl asked me to talk just to, for a few minutes about our philosophy around our charitable work and, and what it really means to us. And as she mentioned, we've been around for almost 100 years. Uh, we'll be celebrating that anniversary in, in 2017. And, and really, our philosophy has always been very, very simple. And it's we, we are a family. And, and the extended Hartzell family, uh, which is all of our employees and retirees, um, we are really passionate about our community roots and being part of the community that we, that we live and work in. And we just want it to be a better place. And so as a company, we really believe that we fully support those passions of our employees and our, and our family members here at Hartzell. 
So as I mentioned, we, we have our longstanding community roots. We care deeply about our employees' interests because we really have that culture here that, that breeds the family atmosphere and, and certainly been reinforced for over 25 years by the Brown family now. So um, just, just as, a, as a recap of some of the things that, that we do um, that, that we really mean a lot to us. Uh, the United Way is certainly uh, one, of our, one of our biggest undertakings of the year. We don't, we don't mandate employee participation, but year after year we're at the 80 plus percent range in employee participation. We're in our 58th year of continuous giving. And uh, we have actually two former presidents of the United Way that work here at Hartsell, Dan O'Connell and Craig Barhorst uh, with us today. And we have two members on the board at the, at the United Way right now. And so we spend a lot of time and energy working with the United Way and Sean Ford and, and, the, and all the organizations that the United Way supports. So to us, that's, that's one of the keys uh, to, to what we believe in and what we're passionate about. Another of the organizations that our employees really get behind is the American Cancer Society. And obviously, it's something that touches us all. Uh, we do two, two things throughout the year. We're met, we are uh, at the uh, Miami County Relay for Life in May every year, and we're a gold sponsor there. Um, but we've also done something for the past 15 years uh, just here at Hartzell, and we have a volleyball tournament that's open to the community, and we call it our uh, you know, Find a Cure Volleyball Tournament. And it's a, you know, a non-competitive, fun tournament, but we, all that money that, that we raise for that tournament goes to the American Cancer Society every year as well. So that's something that's been fueled by our employees and kept alive by our employees. Dave Trissel is really the one that's done that. He couldn't be here, but Jody Stangle has really stepped up and helped with that recently, and Jody's back there in the back. And so that's another thing that we as a, as a company really get behind. You know, I'd say those two are really great examples um, of what we do year after year, but the one that we've really started 20 years ago now and still have a ton of energy and a ton of passion about is our school partnership program. And this is one that, that's near and dear to my heart as well. Um, it's really in two phases. So 20 years ago, we started a program with Bennett School here in Piqua to help mentor uh, the fourth and fifth graders and in two ways. One, we did a tutoring program. So we have about 10 to 12 folks who, who do tutoring with students every week. And then we do a larger program with the entire class uh, size, about 100 kids, where we, we sponsor them to do some fun things throughout the year. So we have a rocket derby out at our airport where we make rubber band airplanes with the kids. We take them on a field trip to the, to the Air Force Museum. We have a farm day, which Rich Hess has generously donated his farm for the past 18 years, I think, Rich, uh, to, to support that program. And then we do a send-off lunch and dance with them at the end of the school year as they, as they graduate on and move on to the next grade. We were a little apprehensive with the new schools that, that we weren't sure how that program was going to evolve, but happy to say that we've taken on the entire fifth grade class at the middle school, so about 290 kids. We had our farm day already, and we're getting ready to start the tutoring program with 10 or 12 volunteers, and really, really excited to keep that program alive and well. And, and really, that's the hallmark, I would say, of what we do from a a day-to-day, week-to-week sort of charitable community work. So I want to call out just a couple more folks who really make that program with, uh, with the schools go. And uh, I see Sherry Pickering back there. I mentioned Rich Hess. I see Jennifer Hughes, Kathy Rindell, uh, Sarah Hulescamp, and anybody else back there? I think that might be it. But again, this is something that I recognize the employees because it's not a company mandate. This is something that we're passionate about as employees and members of the Hartzell family. And it's really just been our great honor to, to, to work with these programs and have the support of the Brown family. And, and we're excited about continuing to do that for the next 100 years. So I'm going to turn it over now to Lee Lurie of Kids Read Now. It's, it's, uh, it's always fun to hear and see what the different companies and organizations in this town do for uh, this town and this community do for all of us and for everybody else. Um, I'm uh, pleased to have the last 12 years, I ran one call now. Many of you receive phone calls from us. On a busy day, we send 7 million of them. Uh, we took a lot of the money out of that, profits out of that company, and built a program called Kids Read Now. Uh, which looks at a simple problem. Every summer, poor kids slide back two to three months in learning. Rich kids pick up where they left off or come back better off because of the types of en uh, en enrichment programs that they normally get. 
But what that means is that half of the students in Miami Valley start fourth grade behind, and a third are more than a year behind. What happens if you're behind in reading? If you can't read at fourth grade level, your, one in t your odds of going to jail are two in 10 if you're a boy. 20% of the kids who can't read will be in jail. Only 20% will ever earn a living wage and less than 4% will ever get through college. That affects all of us business people and Hartzell looking for good quality folks because 70% of all jobs now require a post-secondary education, which means those folks will never get a good job to support our community. And that means business people will be looking elsewhere to expand. So we took a program to fix the summer slide. And we've now served 12,000 kids, 5,000 this past summer. And we started with a very simple process. Kids pick books they want to read. We give them a few books at parents' night where we engage the parents in how to read over the summer with your kids and what to do. And then every week, I happen to know this company that makes phone calls and text messages. And they call the folks. And they ask if you've read a book, punch in the code number on a, on a sticker on the book, and we'll mail you the next book. It's a very simple incentive. Read a book, get a book, keep a book. And so what has happened is that this is the statistics for PICWA of the nine school districts we worked with. This is just PICWA. The others are just as good, if not better. But on the left are the increase in where kids were on the reading score level. So our kids who read books grew. The other kids did not. They stagnated, or they went back. And so what that means is that over the last, in 2015, nine districts, 24 buildings, 4,700 students, 35,000 books. We've now gone over 100,000 books for the program. And we've gotten that cost using processes that are professional from $75 down to $45 per kid. So for $45 a kid, we can improve the fourth grade reading readiness significantly, substantially, inexpensively when you compare that to the average Miami County district that spends $9,700 a year on tuition uh, per student. RT Industries, one of the agencies that gets uh, its facility, we all passed the levy with 68% for the Riverside, thank you, this week. Um, those folks pick, pack, and ship our books. We use volunteers from around the community to sticker the books, label the books, help pack books, read to kids, and follow up with those kids who didn't respond over the summer and ask, why not? So all told, we're very happy to have received donations of over $150,000 in kind, uh, donations and in kind from other organizations in the Valley. But together, we uh, have a program that's been proven cost effective and recognized as one of the best in the country by one of these guys who used to be a politician one of the three on that picture. Um, but for Philanthropy Day, we run a nonprofit group the way a business runs. We're data-driven, process-oriented. We manufacture, uh, manage our costs, and we're a strategic uh, plan that drives success. And if any nonprofit group wants some of the assistance from the people we know and us on helping to build strategic plans and logistics, uh, Melissa or Cheryl are happy to refer, us, refer you to us. So all told, I'd like to now thank you for what we've done for Kids Read Now. Next summer, we hope to hit 7,000 students, um, give away almost 60,000 books. They're piled up in inventory for next summer. And uh, I'd like to introduce Paul Hines. Where's Paul? Paul, you there? A student uh, on a philanthropic mission to spread joy. And after he finishes, uh, we have, I understand you give away uh, stuffed animals? Hmm? Yes? All right, well, I have two cases of them here as a donation to your organization. And I'm going to let him do most of the talking, but I just want to give a little introduction. Um, this started back in December 2012 after the horrible tragedy at Sandy Hook. My husband and I were sitting down and having a conversation with Paul about something that you really don't want to have a conversation with your children about. And as we did, he talked about how sad he was. And he talked about how he really wanted to do something for those children and for the people in Sandy Hook. So as we began to have a conversation, this drive for stuffed animals 
animals, which became known as Polly's Cause in December of 2012, happened. And I'm going to let him share a little bit about how that happened, and then I'll kind of finish up with the final pieces of it. I started this in third grade, and what we did was we would collect stuff, stuff, stuffed animals, and actually the main idea was that we are looking for ways to respond, especially our children, to be a helper and donate stuffed animals to send to the children at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut. San, you can drop them off at Westminster Presbyterian Church or High Street School. Thank you. And I, I think I got, it was, over 200. it was over 200 stuffed animals, but probably more than that. Um, the note, we sent a note with every stuffed animal. Um, they said, this animal is given to you with love from your friends in Piqua, Ohio, in memory of those lost at Stanley Hook Elementary School, God bless. And we found out, I think, three weeks into it, that they had received enough. So we just sent the check of $510, which was a lot of it for most of my friends, a lot of my parents' friends and that kind of stuff. And, my birthday. and, my, and all my birthday money, which I think was like $100. <laughs> and I used all of that. And I used some of it to buy stuffed animals. I sent all that plus the stuffed animals, no, all the $510 to Sandy Hook, and they said that we don't need any more stuffed animals. We've had tons of toys that have actually have more than they need, but this is the note that we got back. Thank you for your heartfelt, generous, and thoughtful con contribution to Snowflakes for Sandy Hook. Because of your efforts and many others, we received snow snowflakes of all shapes sizes and forms from schools, PTAs, community centers, and families across the country and around the world. Sandy Hook students, staff, and families have been the recipient of a blizzard of love and support in the form of snowflakes, and we could not be more thankful. Our community has taken great comfort in the global outpouring of support from wonderful, from wonderful people like you. We will always treasure a blizzard of love, Thank you for your kindness, Sandy Hook Elementary School PTA. And since they already had enough, we sent all of those to um, Dayton Children's Hospital to sell stuffed animals. And the letter that got back, um, it just said, like, most kids don't like going to hospitals. I don't like going to hospitals. And most of my friends agree with me um, that since when kids are going through surgeries, you have to get it shot, all that kind of stuff, for like the first like two or three weeks that my stuffed animals were there, they would give those to kids with like cancer, leukemia, that kind of stuff. Some of us had just, just come for um, checkups and like they were scared of death. Like I'm scared of the death of shots. And so like the kids who were scared of shots, they were probably get a stuffed animal of some sort. And that's the, this is what I did. <laughs> well, I think he explained. I don't know how I got lucky enough to follow you, Paul, but. <laughs> Um, I'm Karen Wendell, and I'm the director of the Piqua Community Foundation. And on behalf of the nonprofit, or not for profit council, we just want to thank all of you for your attendance here today. Um, I think we should give another round of applause to these wonderful people who stood up here and talked about why they give. And as you have heard, 
Philanthropy is alive and well in Miami County. Um, we thank all of you for being here today with us to celebrate all the, all the good people and good companies that help support all the positive things going on in our communities. Before we disperse, I just have one announcement that I've been asked to make. Um, Melissa talked in her opening comments about nonprofit organizations taking advantage of people who are making um, deferred gifts or non-cash gifts. Next spring, on March 22nd, the Not-for-Profit Council is bringing Phil Purcell to Miami County to talk on just that subject. This is going to be a forum for not-for-profit not executives, staff members, board members, any local community people who are interested. It's going to be held at Bruckner Nature Center, again, um, March 22nd of 2016. There will be a morning session that will talk about non-cash gifts like stocks and bonds, life insurance, personal property, gifts in kind, those sorts of things. And then an afternoon session, we'll talk about blending gifts for fundraising success. And that will explore things like deferred gifts, life income plans, charitable endowments, and those sorts of things. Um, the cost for the entire day is $15. You can come in the morning or in the afternoon or both, and lunch will be served as well. There will be more information out in cyberspace about that coming up in the future, but if you're interested, you can talk to one of us or at the local chamber of commerces in all of the counties or all of the cities here in Miami County will have the information about that. So we hope you'll, you'll keep that in mind because it is sometimes an unused way um, to allow people to help your organization and be philanthropic. So thank you again for your participation today. Um, on behalf of Hartzell, please help yourself to the delicious refreshments. And the bells are just to celebrate Philanthropy Day. So we thank you all for being here today and have a good rest of the day.